to all of my silent sisters and brothers of the night's watch Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff lately we've been posting uh, some song and uh, vice and fire related videos and the response to them has been really great uh, the audience is really enjoying Song of Ice and Fire content, so I thought that at least every other week I'd be trying to post a video related to George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire universe. If you've been on this channel for a while, you'll know that next to comic books, Marvel, and DC, I'm also a huge, huge fan of Game of Thrones and the Song of Ice and Fire series. Uh, the books, I just, I just love everything about the universe. Now, my videos recently about A Song of Ice and Fire were kind of... Um, Videos made in frustration because it's taking George R. R. Martin so long to finish The Winds of Winter. We all just want to know what the heck happens. We want to know what the, his ending is going to be, and we're all hoping that it will be better than the HBO ending. But I'm going to put all that aside for today and talk about something a little bit more positive. So, believe it or not, I thought Game of Thrones was pretty much dead. Like, I thought no one really cared about Game of Thrones anymore, but doing a little bit of research and um, listening to the uh the comments and the responses that I got on the Song of Ice and Fire videos, I realized that people are still genuinely excited about Game of Thrones and Song of Ice and Fire universe, and they want more of that type of content. So nowadays, a lot of people are getting into A Song of Ice and Fire and even the Game of Thrones series, even though it's not airing anymore. So I thought it'd be a great idea if you're new to the franchise to know the major differences between the books and the Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones television show, because there are quite a few differences. So these are the top 10 differences between the Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire books that you should know. So the very popular HBO show Game of Thrones first aired in 2011, and the first few seasons were actually pretty true to the books. Like, they followed the events and the plots and everything in the books pretty closely. And I think they did a really good job. But as the show progressed and they started losing source material because George R.R. R. Martin was not keeping up with his writing schedule, they veered off from what was going on in the books and they essentially had to create their own storylines. But even early on in the series, there were some major differences that I think it's really worth to pay attention to and to know if you're a fan of both the show and the books. Number one, Rob Stark's wife. So in the Game of Thrones television show, Rob Stark's wife is uh, depicted as a volunteer woman named... Talisa, but this character essentially does not exist in the books. Rob Stark does have a wife, but uh, in the books, his wife is Jane Westerling, and she is the daughter of a noble house that I believe is sworn to the Lannisters, and the Lannisters are actually the overlord. They're a dying house, and they, they struggle. They don't have huge armies or anything. So Catelyn Stark in the books is actually super angry that her son goes and betrays the pact that he made with Walder Frey and marries this nobody. Well, as we all know, for those of you that have at least seen the show and maybe not read the books, uh, this comes back to bite Rob in the tush. Anyone remember the events of the Red Wedding? And that brings me to another difference. In the television show, Talisa, Rob Stark's wife, is actually depicted dying a very good gruesome death at the Red Wedding. I won't get any into details, but it, it was pretty gruesome. In the books, she's actually still alive. Rob did not bring her to the to uh, the wedding of Catelyn Tully's brother and, and Rosalind Frey. He thought it was too dangerous. He knew something was going to happen. He knew that Lord Walder would see it as an affront to bring the woman, so he just left her behind. He probably should have left himself behind too, though. Number two, Lady Stoneheart. So we all know that in the Game of Thrones television show, Catelyn Stark dies, and that's pretty much the end of it for her. But in the books, did you know that Catelyn Stark is still technically alive? So yeah, in the books, Catelyn Stark dies at the Red Wedding, but Beric Dondarrion, who's one of the leaders of the Brotherhood Without Banners, and he's so close to Thoros of Myr, who does all this like red fire god magic to bring people back from the dead. They actually bring Catelyn back from the dead, but she's not herself. Um, she is this shell of what was once was Lady Catelyn Stark, and now she's called Lady Stoneheart, who 
basically is a vengeful creature who's just going out to murder anybody from the Frey family and anybody who was in any way related or involved possibly with the events of the Red Wedding. Pretty creepy. Now, because the Song of Ice and Fire, the story is not finished, we don't know what ultimately becomes of Lady Stoneheart or how her story ends, but I really hope that George R. R. Martin ties up that storyline in coming books. Number three, in the Game of Thrones television show, Sansa Stark is forced to marry a lot of people. Like, a lot of people. She was almost forced to marry Joffrey, then she was forced to marry Tyrion, and then ultimately she was forced to marry... Ramsay Bolton, who basically just tortured her, and it was it was just horrible. But that actually does not happen in the books. Yes, in the books, she was betrothed to Joffrey Baratheon, and then she was forced to marry Tyrion Lannister, who was actually very kind to her, but she was not forced to marry Ramsay Bolton. In the books, it actually was Jane Poole, who is, uh, if you remember her from the show and even the first Game of Thrones book... Uh, Jane Poole is one of Sansa's best friends, and what happens is Jane Poole is sent to the North disguised as Arya Stark and forced to marry Ramsay Bolton. And basically, Jane was just made to look like Arya Stark so Ramsay could marry her and have a bigger claim over Winterfell. We don't know what Ramsay's ultimate fate is in the books yet, but I really hope it is something similar like in the shows. Number four. Mance Raider isn't dead in the books. In the television show, we see Mance Raider burned at the stake. But did you know that in the books, he actually did not die? There was another character that was burned at the stake, meant to look like Mance Raider, and he burned in place of Mance Raider. Mance instead was sent south from the wall to carry out a rescue mission for Arya Stark. Now, John doesn't know it was Jane Poole who was forced to marry Ramsey Bolton, so he sent someone to hopefully go and rescue her. Number five, Sir Barristan the Bold. Barristan Selmy is not dead in the books. In the television show, uh, he dies in the Sons of the Harpy storyline uh, with, uh, with Daenerys Targaryen. So we all remember that Sir Barristan was the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. And he was unceremoniously dismissed from the King's Guard once Joffrey Baratheon uh, inherited the throne. And he got really upset. So he basically went out east to find the true queen, or who he felt was the true queen, and serve her. And to this day, in the books, he is still alive. Number six, Jojen Reed does not die like he did in the television show. Jojen Reed actually plays a bigger role in the books in getting Bran to where he needs to go. The next few are just pretty much people who died in the show but are still alive in the books. Now, I know what you're thinking. Does the book not kill that many people? No, the book still kills a lot of people, just not as many as the show. Number seven, Aegon Targaryen. For those of you that have only watched the show, you will know that Aegon Targaryen is actually Jon Snow's real name. Uh, and he was the product of the marriage between Lyanna Stark and Prince Rhaegar. Now, in the book, Jon Snow's uh, Targaryen heritage has not really been discussed yet, but we're pretty sure that George is probably still going to take it in that way. But in the books, there is another character named Aegon Targaryen, who is in disguise as a person named Young Griff. So you're probably thinking, who the heck is Aegon Targaryen? Well, Aegon Targaryen in the books is allegedly the son of Elia Martell and R Prince Rhaegar, who was supposed to have been smashed against the wall by the mountain during the sack of King's Landing. Uh, but apparently there was another baby that was put in his place so the true Aegon Targaryen could escape and be saved. There's a lot of replacing people in this. It's like, George, get a new plot line. So in the books, Aegon Targaryen was raised by Prince Rhaegar's best friend, John Cunnington, who is disguised as a man named Griff, and Aegon is young Griff, but his plan was eventually to go to the east and hopefully marry Daenerys and retake Westeros, but in the book, he decides that he's going to have to go back to... It's, it's a whole plot line, and I'm really curious to see how George Martin kind of 
ties that plot line up because this is something that was not talked about in the show at all. So I'm really excited to see if this kid actually is a Targaryen because there are a lot of theories that he's probably not even a Targaryen. But uh, I really hope he's actually the real thing and I really want to see what George Martin does with him. Number eight in the books, Stannis is alive. Stannis the Manus. And he is just not giving up. I actually really kind of like Stannis' storyline. Uh, I think that's how he gets his name, Stannis the Manus. Um, this guy's gotten his ass beat a lot. Uh, I mean, he's still a good knight and commander or king or whatever. But he pretty much goes from having nothing, and he's pretty much beat, to making a comeback. And uh, in the books, he makes a little bit of a comeback. And uh, I don't want to spoil it too much, but uh, he's still very much alive. And I really can't wait to see what comes of Stannis the Manus. Number nine, the Northern Conspiracy. Uh, this, I don't think, was talked about in the books at all. So in A Dance with Dragons, Stannis Baratheon sends the Onion Knight, everyone's favorite, Sir Davos Seaworth, south to get other lords to hopefully join Stannis in his cause. One of those lords is Lord Wyman Manderley, better known as Lord Too Fat to Sit a Horse. And at first, Lord Wyman pretty much puts on this big show that Sir Davos is crazy and has nothing to offer him and he's going to execute him. And this show was pretty much just put on because he had many phrase at court and he didn't want to upset the phrase. But afterwards, he actually goes and talks to Sir Davos and expresses his true intentions because... If you remember, Lord Wyman was a bannerman of House Stark, and he had a son that was at the Red Wedding and died. And on top of that, Lord Wyman's other son is being held hostage by the Lannisters. So he had to be careful, but but in truth, he hates the phrase, he hates the Lannisters, and really will just do whatever he can to make sure that the Lannisters and the phrase go to hell. And last... Roose Bolton and Arya. In season two of Game of Thrones, we see a little friendship develop between Arya Stark and Tywin Lannister at Harrenhal. But but Tywin Lannister doesn't know that the that the very innocuous looking serving girl is actually Arya Stark. This actually does happen in the book, but it was not Tywin Lannister that Arya Stark befriends or gets to know uh, at Harrenhal. It was actually Roos Bolton in the books. I don't know. I thought all that sequence between Charles Dance and Maisie Williams at Harrenhal, I thought that was all really well done. I thought I thought that was that was cool. But of course, Charles Dance is a fantastic actor, and uh, I think he just nailed the role of Tywin Lannister. Anybody else really want to see Charles Dance play a Sith Lord? I think he would make an amazing Sith Lord. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Are there any other major differences between the book and the TV show that I did not talk about? I would really like to hear from you all in the comments. And as always, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.